Hi, I'm Patrick Lowe, Canadian Film Geek Esquire. Of all the Canadian features that deserves to be plucked from obscurity and granted its 50th anniversary commemorative DVD release, it would be Paperback Hero, a 1973 feature directed by Peter Pearson, a cousin to the late Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson, and starring Care de Lee. Yes, that same Care de Lee from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Set in the rural tiny hamlet of Delisle, Saskatchewan, it stars De Lee as Rick Dillon, his most flamboyant and colorful role ever. Hey, come on, stop pissing around before you shoot yourself. We're gonna be late. That Dealey on your wire there. Come on, that Dealey cost me two and a half bucks. You got it. Leave it alone, eh? It's two in the morning to start buggering around. Just gonna lick it a little bit. Hey, Dylan, sure as shit you're gonna miss and you're gonna cause me damage. I'll take care of it, Pop. No, you won't. I'm getting mad, eh? What? You dink? Shit. You call yourself Marshal Dylan, you shoot like Kitty. A horny bundle of hoser machismo, who is also a small-town hockey star, a male chauvinist pig, a major pain in the ass to all around him, and finally, a part-time gunslinger. Throughout the movie, he struts, he brawls, and he fornicates. Rick. Wouldn't it be easier if you used the pliers? <laughs> yeah. It ain't as much fun. And he is content to stay a grown-up adolescent and a small-town star for his adult life. You ever get the notion, Rick? I mean, to move to the big city? Go someplace where I'm just another guy nobody knows? No way! I'm the marshal of this town! Then one day, his boss brings him the bad news. You ever thought of moving to the city? No, why? My wife's brother has some apartments up in Saskatoon. He's usually looking for help. Someone to keep up repairs, keep an eye on the tenants. Now that sort of management, Rick. Yeah, hey, uh, that sounds great. You know, I was thinking something a little more, uh, I mean, I had something closer to home, you know what I mean? I feel like I got a responsibility to the team. I don't want to leave them high and dry. I wouldn't go putting all my chips in the team this season, Rick. What do you mean? Look at that bony bastard. What do you mean about I put the chips on the team, Ed? Do you know, he hasn't gained a pound since we brought him here. You know what we call a steer like that, Rick? A liability. Ed, eh? Can't have liabilities on your team and come out a winner, Rick. God damn it, Ed, I'm talking to you! <laughs> One last game, Rick, and we're closing down the team. Listen, I'll put that call through about that job in Saskatoon if you're still interested. Needless to say, Rick doesn't take it well. Offer on the ice. and he is forced to confront not only his own mortality, but his own immaturity as well. Listen to me. I've got respect in this town. But do you know the last time I ever had to buy a beer? Or a cup of coffee? Or a game of snooker? I guess that don't pull no weight with you. Is that right? You don't pull no weight with you? That's right. So pathetic, Rick. I mean, you better get used to buying your own coffee. Because people in this town, they aren't laughing with you anymore. They're laughing at you. You're a big joke. You don't have a brain in your head. It's just filled with tingle balls. Bye, 
five years from now, nobody will even remember you. So what does he do? He pulls a high noon in the downtown area against the local police. Murdoch! You son of a bitch! I hear you're looking for me! Come on, Murdoch! It's the old fast jar! This is one of those rare Canadian features that had its spotlight in the rink, made its play, and then retired into obscurity. It is fast-paced, exuberant, raunchy, and over-the-top, just like the character of Rick Dillon himself. There were some critics who felt that Carrie Dilley's performance was somewhat it's uneven. Right well, thumbs down, Pa. Oh, yeah, Rick, uh, you might pick me up a generator for the tractor. Can do, Pa. Can do. His accent tends to shift at times, and his character is all over the map. And the other problem is, is that Rick, for all his bravado, is really a paper-thin character. He doesn't have much depth, doesn't think a lot, has no moments of self-doubt or recrimination. For the most part, he is a show-off and a real SOB with women, especially in today's light of the Me Too movement. He is, in fact, a very one-note paperback cliché, but Care de Lee plays it to the hilt. For this is how Rick Dillon deals with the world, by playing a fantasy. His outfit is not the real deal, but then neither is Rick. His accent falters all over the place, but then so does Rick. And when he is forced to choose between giving up his fantasy of being a small-town marshal or going out in a blaze of glory, he chooses the latter. Rick Dillon will not go gently in the night, and he does nothing half-assed. If anything, he'll do it full-assed. The picture was a minor success at the Canadian box office, even outgrossing The Godfather in some Saskatchewan theatres. Yet it was the final triumph for Peter Pearson, his last big success on the big screen, before he would go on to produce and direct For the Record, a CBC TV series in the mid-70s. And as for the critics, not only did they find Care de Lee's performance somewhat uneven, they also held up his character as yet another atypical example of the Canadian male loser on our big screens. A sort of prairie-bound version of the Rowdy Man, Gordon Pinson's own town clown story from Newfoundland. More winners, please! That became the rallying cry of Canadian critics in the mid-70s. <laughs> Yet the triumph of paperback hero cannot be denied. It still remains a gorgeously photographed, brilliantly edited, and timely prairie yarn about the fragility of the male superego and the lengths it will go to preserve itself. It deserves to be seen again and again, and is well worthy of a 50th anniversary release two years from now. Otherwise, I'm Patrick Lowe, Canadian Film Geek Esquire, signing off until our next flick, Megwitch.